The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, this is another week where I am on the road, this time for work. Definitely someplace warmer than here in Pittsburgh, probably, most likely. It is November. Uh, anyways, no, we are throwing back to 2010, baby. Uh, this is uh, June 22nd, 2010 is uh, when this interview is marked. This is a double interview here. I was very excited. Uh, this is, uh, so for context, uh, we are in... Uh, leading into FNW, who I never attended a show in this in this time period, by the way, for some reason. Like, I helped promote this thing, and for, re- for some reason could not make it. I had some other prior engagement. Maybe I worked with a, another wrestling company at the time. Uh, who knows? I, 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 can I go back that far on a Google Calendar? I don't know. Um, but uh, Butterbean, uh, known for Brawl for All. You know, we love talking bar gun on the uh, Mayhem Manias, and this is part of the reason why. Oh, uh, but we got a chance Didn't to talk. Didn't Lunchbox to- hate part gun? I, I I don't know. Maybe he did at the time. I mean, he, he kind of brought him up in the. Oh, he you know he and me. Yeah, lunchbox right. is a part of this. Mad Mike is a part of this. Um, I think somebody else was on the line too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I but was. Yeah, but where, oh, Riz was Riz was there. Was the me. Day. I, like, I, I was I wasn't there. I, I don't think I was there for the interview. Mm-hmm. I was like the the next next person up because that was my first time on the show oh, was this your debut, this debut. I, it'll be interesting to hear hear all this stuff and, and the visual presentation is interesting like shitty green sheet in the background in my basement <laughs> uh before we started bringing a lot of people in studio there uh at least at least uh, uh for a period anyways um we'll get to the but also the second on this is sterling james keenan now known as Corey graves was a part of this um, this is one that just like with Effie last week, this is one of the interviews that I, I bring up a lot when we're talking about people that are really great. You know, uh, Corey Graves was one of the guys, SJK was one of the first guys to say, Hey, I want to be on the show. Uh, mm-hmm. and we had him like two or three times and we always had great conversations with them. Uh, and I forgot how, how fun those conversations were until I listened to this back, man. You know, um, and it's really funny some of the concepts he's going to get into, knowing where he ends up uh, yeah. that we have on this. So uh, we're going to talk about Butterbean. We're going to talk about Brawl for All. We're going to talk about local wrestling, and we're going to talk about Brian Danielson came up in this randomly because this is a really important week oh, of yeah. when that went down with somebody in a necktie. So it's going to we'll, be some spanking good times. That's sorry. right. Go listen to the interview. Don't judge how we looked back then. And uh, we'll be back with some uh, commentary right after we're done with the interviews. Uh, heavyweight boxer, MMA fighter, what don't you do, Butterbean? You know, I mean, I've done it all. I've done from MMA, boxing. I actually, one time I've done a sumo wrestling in Japan. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all. I do it all. You name it, I'll do it. I don't care. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um... Of course, uh, you know, of course, we know you from wrestling, but you actually started off in boxing, a uh, little bit of everything. Uh, so uh, let's let's go back a little bit real quick, just get a little background on you for, for some of our listeners. Uh, so right. you you were a boxing, uh, a heavyweight boxer, um, and uh, and you got involved with the WWE. Where, where a lot of us... Oh, was w- actually WWF. The WWF, time. yes. They did not get the F out yet. So, <laughs> so it's, tell exactly. us... Exactly. Um, I actually done a couple shows against uh, with Mark Merrill. Mm-hmm. Had to spank him around and teach him how to teach, you know, treat Sable correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and then, then uh, I still had a couple couple uh, engagements up to my contract. Mm-hmm. And Bart Gunn had, had pissed off Vince. Um, some of the ball fall, he was supposed to take a dive, he didn't want to take a dive, and he ended up knocking everybody out, and, uh, so they called him the big guns, and me, myself, and I, <laughs> and, uh, I had, to, I had to give him a good spanking. Awesome. Now, 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 Bart Gunn went off to, uh, to, uh, shoot fighting in Japan, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, he, he, he has done, I mean, our fight at WrestleMania was a shoot fight, a lot of people don't know that, but it was an actual... You know, go for it all, you know, winner wins. Mm-hmm. 
and and Bart come out really badly, badly, badly. <laughs> he has he has not thought straight since. <laughs> so so uh, that knock to the head was a little bit of inspiration for him to get better. Yeah, you know, I mean, I kind of like beating up on wrestlers. I, I beat <laughs> up on uh, another wrestler fought in uh, the first Pride, Sean O'Hare mm-hmm. fought in a Pride show in in Vegas. Is the first one that Pride came to the U.S. from Japan and. uh fought him on there i had to spank him pretty good on that too <laughs> yeah we actually we did get a question of uh somebody wanted to ask to ask about that uh of course sean o'hare another wrestler uh you know we may remember from wcwe days uh for our fans but uh he's he is was that your first uh, uh submission win with sean well no actually i, I actually not shot out but oh okay. no i've got a lot of um, a lot of submissions i mean uh, in, in the MMA world, I'm like 75 or 80 percent submissions. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guys don't want to stand there and punch, so they get stupid and take me down. And guess what? Butterbean knows a little jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, the last, the last Pride show, I submitted a Brazilian purple belt, mm-hmm. and I become the, the true honorary jujitsu bean. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now, what got, what made you get into WM? Or, I'm sorry, MMA after uh, after your boxing career? Well, I, I have a friend of mine that fights mixed martial arts, Tony Mark, Mark Coleman. Mm-hmm. A lot of people in the world, you know, in the MMA world, knows who he is. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I might want to try that one day. You know, K1 or MMA or something. Next thing I know, I got 25 promoters from all over the world calling me. Mm-hmm. Uh, next thing I know, a month later, I'm in Japan doing a kickboxing event against uh, Fujimoto. His name is Fujimoto. Um, tough, tough kid. Uh, and uh, and I'm knocking him out pretty quick after he after he started kicking me, and I fell in love with the sport. Mm-hmm. And then I went from the kickboxing. In Japan, it's like kickboxing on steroids compared to here. I uh, went from that mm-hmm. to mixed martial arts and, and just went from there and, and started loving it. Now, now from, uh, you know, I've watched a little bit of UFC. I got, you know, watch a little bit of the K1 on HDNet and everything. And I know, I, I know, like historically, a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, the wrestlers are usually the ones that have the upper hands. And of course, you come from a boxer background, but of course, you also do, know Judicio ju- too. But, uh, I, I imagine, uh, you were, you were strictly boxer, you know, originally. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. Yeah, the first, first time I went over there, I mean, mm-hmm. I started getting kicked. I'm like, whoa, whoa this shit hurts. <laughs> so I just charged him and knocked him out. Yeah. I ended up fighting a guy named Mike Bernardo, which is actually a boxer, but also a great kickboxer. Bernardo really kicked me so bad, I didn't walk right for about a month and a half. I could not walk. I mean, so after that, I learned more of the defense on it and the jiu-jitsu in. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, so, so the wrestlers don't give you any more trouble anymore? No, no, I, I mean, they're more, you know, after submitting Zulu on the last pod show, you know, they, they, mm-hmm. a lot of them realize they don't want to take me down because there's 400 pounds that they got to deal with once they get me down. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. So. Um, I believe, uh, Mad Mike, did you have a question here for our guest? Oh, yeah. Um, I was just curious. Um, who is it more fun to knock out, Bart Gunn or Johnny Knoxville? You know, I, I had a lot of fun probably knocking out Bart because he was a much more equivalent type opponent. Mm-hmm. Johnny Knoxville would be like beating up a grandmother at a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, speaking a little bit about the you know, a lot of the wrestlers that come over, uh, what do you what do you think about us? Uh, you know, there's a lot of rumors, of course, about guys like uh, Bobby Lashley. Of course, has been made a start in MMA. Uh, there's been talk about Batista, Kurt Angle, of course, Pittsburgh's own uh, Kurt Angle. Since you're going to be in the area here, uh, you know, what do you think about guys like that? You know, kind of you know, all declaring to to head on over. Uh, to MMA as as a person that's made a crossover from another sport yourself. Well, Ken Sh- Ken Shamrock done it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a great crossover. But why why just participate in one sport? Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. so many different sp- sports out there. You know, I've done the wrestling, boxing, kickboxing, K1 sumo. Run. I've hit five of them so far. Um, I don't think basketball is going to work too well for me. 
But I'm sure there's something <laughs> else I can get in there too. I don't know. Big Show used to be a basketball player, right? <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe we can have a one-on-one between you and Big Show sometime. Maybe so. Paul's pretty tall, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got the dunk on you, unfortunately. So, um, <laughs> excellent. So I played against Shaq one time. I didn't do too well. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll leave basketball to somebody else. Awesome, awesome. Now I was, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, looking up all your accolades. I understand that you had one more that uh, DJ Lunchbox had uh, had shared with me before we had you on here. Yeah, I was, uh, I was curious. I mean, you're clearly a man of many talents: boxing, kickboxing, MMA. Uh, but I found out that you are also a uh, restaurateur. Well, I had a uh, restaurant that- for a long time. I've closed it down. I got tired dealing with people. I travel so much. Mm-hmm. So I've mm-hmm. closed my restaurant down because, I, you know, I, I, food has to be just right. And when, when you're not got the whip on the employees, they don't want, they don't want to do it right. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just closed it down and now I cook for myself and friends and that's about it. I see. We got some, uh, we got some updated information now. But uh, <laughs> you did, you did own, uh, Mr. Bean Barbecue. Yeah, I sure did. Sure did. Excellent. Well, let's, Excellent. Well, let's talk about the show this weekend. Of course, right here in Pittsburgh, uh, you're going to be uh, appearing for Far North Wrestling in Cheswick, PA, at the Chess Arena, taking on another wrestler that uh, I'm sure you're going to take great joy in uh, knocking out. We hope uh, Sterling James Keenan. Yeah, he runs his mouth a lot. I saw, I, I did an <laughs> interview with him not long ago, mm-hmm. and he wouldn't shut up. He runs his mouth. Mm-hmm. I mean. <laughs> I don't understand some of these guys. You know, uh, they don't realize it just takes one little wrong sound, and I might forget what sport I'm in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, or I might intentionally forget what sport I'm in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. So, how did you get involved with the with the Far North Wrestling Organization for this event? Well, you know, I, I really, I think who I wrestle for really, you know, I don't, I don't, I won't wrestle just for anybody. Mm-hmm. And they contacted me, and we talked back and forth for a while. I talked to, I got a lot of friends out there that wrestle and do other stuff, and, and you know, I got really high, 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 high good regards for them, so we worked a deal out, and here I am. Excellent, excellent. Have, have you been to Pittsburgh before? Um, I have, but uh, not, not a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, we recommend the Primani Brothers if you want a good sandwich if you're around. Um, hey, I'm, I'm good for food anywhere. You let me know, we'll, we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, now, Sterling James Keenan. Nothing too bad and good food. I mean, you know what? What better can there be? <laughs> excellent. Um, now, now, SJK uh, looks like he's taken on the moniker of the international badass lately. Are you going to be uh, attempting to take that away since you're uh, very well traveled yourself? You know what? Yes, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I really do. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I'm so. T- some of the guys try to do some of their all messed up stuff, and why not just hit them and knock them out? <laughs> it makes it so much easier. <laughs> and the people love it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we are actually scheduled to talk to uh, SJK following talking to you. Uh, do you have any direct words uh, for him, uh, you know, going into this Friday? No, 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 don't, don't scare him. I hate guys that are scared. They run. I hate when they run. I don't want them afraid of me. I want them when they, I, I'm 400 pounds. I don't want to have to chase them down before I beat okay. them brutally. Okay. Do, do you, do you want us to, 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 to lull him into a false sense of security and maybe tell him that you might be a little worried about this weekend so you can just knock him out? Beautiful. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. That's genius. We'll do that for you. Okay. That is genius. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work that for you. We'll work for that, definitely. Um, Appreciate it. Excellent. So, uh, what else is coming up? Whoa. What else is coming up in the future for Butterbean then? Well, I, I have a couple fights coming up. I got a fight in Poland that I'm going to be doing pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Um, not against the world's strongest man. He's the five time world's strongest man. I'm going to fight him in Poland. Excellent. Um, so, it should be a lot of fun. Awesome, awesome. Of course, everybody, if you want to check out information on this, fnwwrestling.net uh, to get your tickets there. And I do understand okay, for those... One thing I do, oh, other yeah. than a lot of other fighters, a lot of other wrestlers, mm-hmm. I always make sure I have time for the fans. Mm-hmm. The people that come to fight, everyone's going to get an opportunity to meet me, shake my hand, take pictures, etc., etc. 
And then I'm going to knock somebody out, body slam them. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to have a lot of fun doing it. Awesome. Awesome. And I will take suggestions. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's got an idea of what they want me to do, throw it at me. Who knows? I might try it. Um, <laughs> I, I have a suggestion, Barbie. I, okay. I would like to see you get in the octagon with Brock Lesnar. I would love to fight Brock. <laughs> I would love to fight Brock. Are you? Vince a- almost put something together back when he was wrestling, but uh, it never did. It never did come around. Does, does that a uh, knife tattoo piss you off as much as it does us? <laughs> I'm not a big tattoo kind of guy, anyhow. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, I'd love to fight Brock. Would love to. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, thank thank you very much for joining us, Butterbean. Don't want to take much more of your time here. Uh, but check them out, fmwwrestling.net, for information on the show. And I understand there will be DVDs available after the show. For you guys not in the area, uh, you'll have an opportunity to see what transpires this Friday night with Butterbean and SJK. So. Hey, beautiful. Don't, don't miss it. I'll see you all this weekend. All right. Thanks a lot, man. What's up, guys? Again, thanks for Butterbean for, uh, for joining us here on the Mayhem Show. But on the line now is... The guy he's going to face this Friday at FNW in Cheswick, PA. Uh, friend of the show. Uh, he was on here last in October, uh, way back on episode 188. Sterling James Keenan, the international badass. How are you doing tonight? I'm fantastic. How are you? Let me let me make it a quick correction on your intro. I, I appreciate the fantastic intro, but I'm not only the guy that will face Butterbean, mm-hmm. I'm the guy that's going to beat Butterbean. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, now... So, so you're in the international badass now. Is that is that uh is that straight from your? Uh, I know you just got off some international tours last we talked to you. Yeah, you know, um, I honestly don't even know where that name actually came from. I think <laughs> I, I probably referred to myself as such once or twice, just kind of on the fly in a promo or something, and someone picked up on it and kind of ran with it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of stuck. So that's 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 really what the it's as deep as the story behind that is. Excellent. <laughs> Now, I think last we were talking to you, uh, you guys were just starting to do shows out there in Cheswick, PA, which I think was a new area for you. Uh, how have those been going? I know I've been hearing from some friends. There have been some great shows out there, but uh, how's been how's been going? How's been the crowds out there? Uh, they've been awesome. Uh, the crowds have been steady. Um, uh, arguably the biggest we've drawn in quite some time. I mean, I don't know exact numbers, but they, they've been solid. You know, some of the better independent wrestling crowds that I wrestled in front of, and that goes beyond Pittsburgh. I mean, they've been pretty nice. And uh, cats in the Chess Arena are awesome. They they really work just as hard as we do as far as setting up with the production. And mm-hmm. we're this isn't your typical independent show where you know it's a high school gymnasium and there's a black curtain just hanging and that's where guys come out. We have a full blown stage entrance and professional light system. The, the guys in the Chess Arena actually hook us up with the same lighting system that they use when rock bands come in. You know, so we awesome. have the same the same setup and all the the tricks and gadgets that you know Kip Butch and Gage or whatever band comes in actually has at their disposal. So it's pretty cool. How how was it working in, in the same venue that Snoop Dogg's recently performed? <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. I, any any time you get to follow in the footsteps of someone like Snoop Dogg, it's something <laughs> to get excited about. Plus, like I said, I just actually went to Chester Arena a few weeks ago and uh, saw Kill Switch and Gage. So that was kind of cool too. You know. That they performed on the same stage that we we use as our entranceway, so that was a little bit of a thrill. I'm a big fan of those guys. Awesome, and of course, I know I know I've been out there for the TNA show. It's a pretty big venue, so it really really yeah, nice it size is. For... I was actually there for the TNA show mm-hmm. as well, and um, they obviously packed it, you know, to the gills. It was it, they were they were. Mm-hmm. I, I want to say there was somewhere around 900 people there. I think mm-hmm. was the final number. Which, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, that's not the biggest venue in the world, but. You know, 900 people were packed in there pretty tight. But it, it's, I think, it's, in my own personal opinion, it's about the best wrestling venue probably in, in the tri-state area that I've been to. Um, as far as, you know, it's comfortable, it's big enough. It, and plus, like I said, we have all the, the gadgets and gizmos and lights and sirens and all the, the little toys to help enhance the, the show experience. Excellent, excellent. Uh, before we get to the big thing that we brought you on for, I do want to ask, because I, I discovered that uh, you were going to be in AIW this Sunday as well. Uh, in a four-way match with, uh, if I got this right, Facade, uh, Mercer, and Gargano, uh, two friends of the show in there, uh, and the winner, I believe, gets the AIW title, which is vacant, and uh, gets to uh, uh, take a crack at Brian Danielson that same night. Is that right? Oh, see, I didn't know. I, was, I didn't know the, the Brian Danielson thing was involved. <laughs> I knew. I, I knew. I, I'd seen the, the updates. This is how you know independent wrestling. I find oh, out yeah. more stuff when I get well, there. Beyond. 
This you know, is, this but, is um, I only yeah, know. I knew it's for the I. I knew it's for the IW title. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was, that was, you know, that's always pretty exciting. I honestly don't. I don't remember her actually losing that title. I know I had the the absolute title for a long time. I don't think I ever lost it for some reason or another. I'm not the champion anymore. I don't think I ever lost it, so I'll get a chance to win that back. But uh, the guy to look out for uh, on the indies uh, is Tommy Mercer. He's actually coming in for the Warrior Show. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen this guy, he's he's an absolute monster. He's about six six, six seven, just jacked to the gills. You know, just just an awesome talent. I I'm making the call right now. I, I think it'll be a very short period of time between you know him appearing on the indies and WWE signing him up. You say, is this the gentleman that goes by nice. No Mercy, Tommy Mercer? Yeah, No Mercy, Tommy Mercer. The, the, the dude's awesome, man. He's a cool guy, but and, mm-hmm. and in the ring he gets it done too. But I'm saying the guy's just as far as the independents go, you don't see guys that look like him very often. You know, they're, they're once in a, once in a blue moon, someone that big and, and agile comes along and he's definitely something special. But uh, that said, I'm still going to beat him. <laughs> well, uh, uh, going with that, <laughs> since you're so sure you're going to beat him, uh, and the opportunity to take on Danielson, if I, if I have this straight. Uh, so, uh, what do, what do you think of the situation going on there? I don't know how much, again, you know, you've been following with it, you know, that news, uh, with his firing in WWE. Yeah. I'm actually very out of the loop as far as WWE goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I keep in touch with Punk, just mm-hmm. and we very rarely talk wrestling. It's generally we talk about baseball or other <laughs> stupid things. Um, so I, I actually just so happened to be, I was getting into bed, actually. That's how much of a party animal I was. I was getting into bed at like 10.50 a few weeks ago, and I was flipping through the channels, and the NXT beatdown came in. And I didn't know you know many of the guys other than Danielson and uh, Tyrone Evans. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I just kept it on there. I was watching kind of interesting, something different. And then I saw, I saw Brian choking out, uh, Justin Roberts with his tie. And I actually <laughs> laughed about it. You know, I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's kind of a cool shot. And then the next morning I got up and I heard all this nonsense about them letting him go. And mm-hmm. I don't, I don't expect, I've been hearing people say it's a work. It's, it's, it's legit. I, I don't know what it is, but, uh, whatever. I, I hope it is a work. Because Brian works hard, man. I mean, he's worked harder than just about anybody I know, and, and the guy deserves a shot to shine on a national stage. And a little taste that he's gotten, from what I understand, he's done really well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I I want to I obviously wish success to any of my friends in the business. So I, I hope it's work, but uh, if it's not, then I will gladly continue to beat on him on the Indies. Oh, he did, yeah, he, def- he definitely didn't have any trouble uh, ending up on every show I could think of in the next month. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, and now again, you know, this Friday, you're taking on Butterbean. I am. Yes. Uh, now, we talked to him right before talking to you, of course. Uh, now, when we did ask him, we were like, you know, are you concerned? You know, you're, you're stepping into a wrestler's ring, and he sounded a little worried, to be quite honest. Really? Yeah, yeah. He, he was yeah, really I, like... I, 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 was, I did the, the radio show on 93.7 The Fan with him uh, the other day. We had an interview with John Burton. It was on Sunday afternoon, mm-hmm. and, you know... He was he was talking talking a little bit of smack. Okay, okay. He didn't seem too concerned. Truth be told, I was a little concerned mm-hmm. because you know I don't like getting punched in the face at any point, let alone by a four hundred pound man who does it for a living. <laughs> um, I think it's gonna be fun. I'm actually curious to see you know how it works out. Butterbean is no stranger to the wrestling business, mm-hmm. um, and I actually have been delving into the world of MMA a little bit. I just started training. Um, I think that's kind of going to be my next adventure here in the world of sports. Um, not anytime in the immediate future, but hopefully by the end of the year, I think I'd like to step into a cage and or ring or whatever it is. But uh, So I've been doing a lot of training in that and kind of unintentionally honing my skills. So it's going to be interesting. You're going to basically see a high rate. I promise you it will be a lot, a lot better than Antonio Inoki and Muhammad Ali. <laughs> have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen you're that not, match? So you're saying you're not just going to lay on the mat and kick at his legs until I, he gets out exactly. of the ring? I, I, I may lay on the. I'm going to lay on the mat and just wait for him to come. And let me put him in guard for jujitsu. That's what's going to be. <laughs> but uh, no. But yeah, that was honestly like one of the most boring things I've ever sat through in my life. So I promise you, will be you know more exciting than that. But I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I am honestly. Butterbean's a you know a, a celebrity. He's not just a. He's not a wrestler. He's not a. You know, anything. He's everything. He's he's a celebrity in that he's he's a fighter. He's an MMA fighter. He's a boxer. He's been in movies. He's been on TV, and uh, so I mean, it's kind of exciting to, to be able to get in the same ring with him and 
and then show them what what it is that I do. Excellent, excellent. So tell me, tell me, uh, kind of along those lines, what do you have that Bart Gunn and uh, Sean O'Hare didn't? Uh, you're giving me more than like thirty seconds to respond to that one because I have to think. <laughs> <laughs> Bart Gunn and Sean O'Hare both like six foot five, six foot six, Jack to the heel guys. Mm-hmm. I um, I can honestly say I I know what it is. I have wrestled the Necro Butcher and Madman Pondo in Japan. Oh in yeah, matches, and I've come, yeah. Out, and I've come out victorious. You took, you took, so I have that. You took a few staples in that match, if I remember. I've taken staples. I think Pondo <laughs> stabbed me in the head with a knife of some sort. Thumbtacks, you know, you name it. It's been done. So I, I, I've I've got that going for me. And I'm not just like I said. I, I I'm not just the uh, the typical pro wrestler. I'm not you know. I'm not going to go out there and do only pro wrestling. I, I'm actually quite capable and well versed in various other forms of combat. So we'll see. I mean, I don't know what good anything is going to be against a 400 pound guy. Like my jujitsu may be strong, but I don't think it's going to really work <laughs> against the guy the size of Butterbean. But uh, so it's it's not going to be we'll like uh, Hogan versus Rocky in Rocky Three, right? It's not. No, it's not going to be that bad. But it, it, that would be more entertaining, would it not? I mean, it means, the roles would be reversed. If, if Thunderlips was the boxer and Rocky was the wrestler, that may be how it ends up. <laughs> he may, there's, there's a small chance he may throw me into like the third or fourth row. I don't know. So, so if, you paid, exactly. if, you, if you paid the money for the uh, for the gold circle seating, you may uh, end up with a souvenir. Uh, <laughs> That's right. You, you may actually be able to take me home in your pocket. That's right. Because Coleman, I will be in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, there we, again, I didn't know you were training uh, MMA. What do you? And we asked this of Butterbean a little earlier. What do you think of uh, all these wrestlers? Like, uh, like of course, yeah, Brock Lesnar and uh, Bobby Lashley have gone over. There's talk about guys like Batista and and, and uh, Pittsburgh's own Kurt Angle going in MMA. What do you think about this kind of uh, uh, flux of people? Uh, you know, talking about at least uh, and and seeing about going into MMA in general. I think it's kind of a natural progression in that, you know, the wrestling business and MMA is different as they are, and they are very different. They're similar in the mindset. I mean, it's a combat sport. It's, it's, it's macho. It's, you know, I'm tougher than you, even, even, you know, in the pro wrestling world. But, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm super excited to see what, what else Brock does now that he's back from being sick. Um, I'm, I will be watching him and Carlin on the third. Mm-hmm. Check that out. Uh, Lashley has had some pretty good success. But the thing with the difference between Lashley and Lesnar and even Angle is those guys were amateur wrestlers. They they found their way into the pro wrestling world, and, and they ended up in the world of entertainment after they had their background in that. A guy like Batista, Batista was a sports entertainer first. And I, I'm kind of in the same, some, same mindset. You know, I, I have... I wrestle. I mean, I have athletic background. I wrestled up until high school, and, and you know, um, I'm not just for the first time in my life competing in anything. But um, I think it's awesome to see the success that you guys are having. And I think Brock Lesnar is honestly about the best thing to happen to UFC in a long time for marketability purposes. As an MMA fan, I think it's awesome that, that the, the company is just growing like it seems to be nonstop. Um, every you know you're you're getting a lot of national exposure, and there's always new TV shows and specials about it, and uh, so and, and as for myself personally, it's something that I kind of fell into. Um, I had a friend of a, I had some friends of a friend that that trained MMA. They actually used to own a gym with Mac Danzig of UFC, and um, you know I I started just working out with them, just kind of as a workout, just kind of stay in shape, and. Uh, they actually came to me after after one of our training sessions and said, "Hey, man, did you ever did you ever think about fighting?" And I said, "Honestly, no. It was just kind of I just wanted a new workout, something different. I got a little bored with everything." And they said, "Well, uh, in our opinion, it might be something you uh, you should try because we think you'd be really good at it." So, uh, you know, that kind of caused me to step my game up. And seeing as how I'm from Pittsburgh, and now you know I have a I have a radio show on FM radio, and Kurt Angle's a Pittsburgh guy. I laid down the challenge on, on the air last Sunday. If Kurt Angle wants to do his MMA thing, give me a few months. We'll do it for charity or something. I want to be Kurt Angle's first legitimate MMA match, and we can do it for Pittsburgh for some charity, maybe Children's Hospital or something killer like that. Yeah. Definitely. Nice. Excellent. So, um, 
Well, right? course, every, every time, every time Kurt Angle's talked about getting into the, you know doing it, and they he talks and talks and talks and talks, and then he has a reason to back out. He he doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to do striking. He just wants to do grappling. That's fine. He can make the rules, <laughs> whatever he wants to do. I just, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, let's do it for charity. I got nothing to, to you know, I got nothing to lose. He's got nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. I mean, I, I, truth be told, he, I'm sh- reasonably sure he'd probably beat me. <laughs> but hey, you know what? It's, it's for fun. It's, some people run marathons to test themselves. I've decided I want to fight professional athletes. You know, that's going to be my <laughs> new thing. Nice. <laughs> You That's heard it here second, right here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, Kurt Angle versus SJK. Uh, let's make this happen. Right, guys, I'm telling you, let's make it happen. I, I, want, your, I want your assistance. I want to yeah. make this totally independent of any, you know, organizational promotion. This isn't about indie wrestling. Like I said, let's do it for charity. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to make any money. I just, let's just have some fun with it. So you got to take the ball and run with it. I'm entrusting it in your hands. You know, I, you know, I want to put that out there. If you go to KurtAngleTNA.net, it's his official website. Uh, I know we, we've, we've tried putting some stuff through there before. There is, uh, let's see, they've moved stuff around here. Da, 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 da. But go, go there. There's going to be a contact there. We'll find it. He's got Facebook and Twitter. Flood that. Go to KurtAngleTNA.net. Tell him. Tell them to face SJK. Tell tell them about this. Tell them to face SJK. We'll put the mayhem the mayhem and crew out said, there. And, and, and I just want to clarify: that I'm not I'm not looking to, to make my name at his expense or mm-hmm. or you know this is, no, this is no sort of cheap heat thing. I got all the respect in the world for Kurt Angle. He's one of my favorite professional wrestlers. I mean, I respect everything he's ever done. I just it, it, there always seems to be an issue whenever he wants to make that crossover to MMA. And I'm willing to be, you know, I, I'm willing to totally accommodate him as much as he wants. Whatever he wants to do, as long as it's, you know, fair and balanced, I'm in. I'm in. Maybe maybe I'll be like the Malky brothers of, of UFC, of MMA. Maybe I'll just get beat up by everybody. But whatever it is, <laughs> I'm, I'm crossing that line. It just matters that you're there, right? That's right. Excellent. All right. Well, of course, uh, Well, what else is coming up for SJK in the future uh, beyond this Friday? Um, you know, I got this once the summertime picks up. I got some more international stuff going back to England again, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually got an email the other day doing another tour throughout Europe. I'm going to do, I believe it's Germany, Ireland, France, and England again. Um, and, and, you know, obviously always doing new independent companies here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, my schedule's kind of, I'm actually making a point to kind of ease my schedule up a little bit so that I can train MMA. So even though I may not be fighting Kurt Angle, I will be fighting sometime in the, you know, not too distant future. So I want to be able to concentrate on that. And, um, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. I got this, this radio show on 93.7 The Fan here in Pittsburgh. And I've been doing that. That's a lot of fun. I mean, I get paid pretty well to talk about sports for uh, hours at a time. So that's kind of cool. But, um, yeah, so I'm just staying really busy, man. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. You know, my, my, Family's doing awesome. I have no complaints about anything. I just waiting to see what the uh, what the world holds next for SJK. Excellent. And you can check out SJK and Butterbean this Friday, June twenty fifth, at uh, Chess Arena in Cheswick, PA. Check out the information fnwwrestling.net. And like we mentioned, it should be on DVD uh, shortly after for all you guys that are in the Pittsburgh area to check it out and see what happened. So that's right. And if you're not in the Pittsburgh area, it will still be on DVD. So you can order it and we will ship it to you. Excellent. (laughs) Uh, So go check that out. Thank you very much. Sterling James Keenan for joining us once again on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You're always welcome back, sir. Hey, thank you guys. It's a pleasure uh, hanging out with you guys. And, you know, anytime you guys want me back, I'd be glad to glad to join you. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Riz, I know uh, you had a connection issue. You didn't get necessary to listen to that Sterling James Keenan part of the interview. Right. Right. Uh, so I'll fill you in with some notes on that. But first of all, you did listen to the Butterbean in, 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 and, and, uh, you know, what was your biggest takeaway from Butterbean being on the show? Oh, Butterbean just like, like, like this was still very, I don't want to say, I don't want to say prime Butterbean, but it was very promotional promotion, prime Butterbean. Like this was just him talking for for that for that good moment mm-hmm. like um it was so much fun it, it, it was it yeah. was 
it sound like he sounded like a, he was a good having a good time on the show, mm-hmm. which is amazing. Um, the, the stories that he had, like how he was doing WWE work with or WWF work with the likes of Mark Barrow and uh, Bart Gunn. Uh, I try to look up stuff for I, I try to like see if there was anything with Mark Barrow and Butterbean in WWF, but I couldn't find anything. Um, but still, I like just hearing him talk about uh, how he was brought in by Vince to mess up Bart Bart Gunn for messing up the for messing up his baby or or Vince Russo's baby or whoever you believe's baby. Um, and I think I mentioned like in the in that in that little in that little segment, uh, I did mention that in Dark Side of the Ring they did talk about how there was that re there was supposed to be a rematch uh, in Japan in an MMA fight mm-hmm. with Bark Gun and Butterbean. Mm-hmm. I don't think that happened. I don't, I don't think that happened. But still, I, just hearing him talk about how that stuff happened and he, hearing the history of him with WWF uh, was pretty fun. Like, like we had Butterbean. You had you had Butterbean on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure I got like the connection through Sterling and and such to make it happen. Still, but, uh, no. Uh, but also, like, like he probably reached out to me about, like, hey, can we help promote this? I'm like, yeah, man, I'll promote it, man. You know, so which was, was really cool, um, which is probably how that happened back in the day. So also, he mentioned Hulk Hogan's celebrity wrestling, which I forgot about. And yeah. I, I just did a quick search. It is actually if you go to uh, archive.org, the Internet you know, uh, database, or, but archive.org, like it's on there. Like I'm watching an episode right now. Uh, in my browser so and, and i'll caution i know they're having some issues because they got hacked recently so but you can like download the episodes it looks like uh from it I, it's cut off so i can't tell what what channel like i'm watching uh, uh brian knobs uh and a bunch of celebrities that uh, i don't recognize uh frank stallone popped up by the way uh so yeah frank yeah. stallone <laughs> uh nikki zering uh Dustin diamond rest in peace Jeez, uh wow. danny bonaducci yeah so uh, todd bridges and Dennis Rodman. So this is like, uh, like mid late two thousands kind of thing. It looks like Team Nasty and Team Beefcake. Uh, of course, of course, of course, Beefcake was. This. Yeah, it's all Hogan's buddies or whatever, right? So um, that that might be an interesting watch back as well to, to see, see yeah. who's involved. And there's Butterbean in the shot too. So I'm not going to show because uh, well, it's on archive. I don't think we're going to get a copyright notice, but um, so yeah, no. But that was like just again stuff I've forgotten about. Man, I can't believe these conversations that we've had uh, back in the day. Um, uh, my favorite phrase that he brought up was jujitsu bean. Uh, jujitsu, jujitsu, yeah. jujitsu bean? bean was <laughs> like he he was stuttering over it too. Okay, oh we're, we're, we're not so the only ones. Doing it. The kid, the kid in the background and everything. So, uh, and he was just he was just one of those dudes. And I appreciate this. Like I appreciate this when when there were the the superstar shows we would work with and seeing Roddy Piper say, "Hey, I'm here to make the show as as good as possible. Be here, yo, make the fa- make sure the fans are happy and everything." Yep. Right. Like, like I, you know, like I love that vibe and, uh, and, and everything. And, you know, hearing a lot of, you know, hearing him like mention things like pride FC and things like that, you know, that, that, that he was involved with, you know, at the time, uh, uh going into the Sterling interview and, and Riz, I know you didn't for this recording, no, I will, but I you will should still probably go this. back and listen to me. We won't have to record a, 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 a pandemic uh, later or something. Um, but you know, man, there was so much fun talking with, uh, with Sterling, um, Corey Graves, um, he was also talking about how he was getting into MMA uh, at the time. He's like, yeah, I think it's gonna, the next thing I'm trying. And he has a sh- radio show on 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 the fan here in town and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, you know, he's AIW International Badass was a com it was a was a term given to we named the episode International Badasses <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. this thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was really fun to kind of have that conversation. It's a nice time capsule. I love that the website. Hey, I want to do an MMA show for charity, uh, a fight with charity with Kurt Angle because he hasn't done anything yet. Please go to KurtAngleTNA.net. <laughs> Let's oh go go reach out to him, right? Like somebody got the dot com of Kurt Angle TNA. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> like he and couldn't even pay great. with it for this DNA money or whatever, you know, or they wouldn't let him let it go or something. Like that's Wait, so, now, so. Now, now you got me curious. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's not active now. When it's I not look active. At it. Is the oh, dot com? Did you see the dot com? Not active. Go to they are both not active. Let's go to hover.com and see if they're still out there. See if they're available. Hey, can we go buy them and just redirect, buy them, and redirect, and redirect them to this show? Uh, so, <laughs> hold on. Uh, so, no, and also, like, the, the other, like, this is when Brian Danielson was let go because of the tie incident. He was uh, fired for, like, a month of WWE. Mm-hmm. And ended up in Cleveland for an AIW slash Chikara show, which we ended up going to the Chikara show of that day with Eamon, who was visiting from Texas at the time. What a week this was. Maybe that's the reason we didn't go because we're doing the Oh, because Eamon was probably in town that weekend. Eamon was so we in didn't town. have time that's to go to this other show. Why. And we're like, we'll see you Sunday in uh, in Cleveland or something, right? By the way, uh KernangleTNA.net is available for nineteen ninety nine as of this recording. And the dot com is oh, also available is. if you want it. That so, is tempting, Sorg. That that's tempting. There you go. Just send it to Riz Plays Games. Send, send it to <laughs> send it to Patreon. There you Get go. Patreon oh, news. Patreon. That'd be amazing. Um, no mercy. Tommy Mercer is the guy that's going to be signed by WWE. I don't know if the dude had a signing or anything since, but I know he is still involved in the Detroit area. I see him on shows, and I think he's still involved with. G- I think he was recently in JCW champion in the recent years too. So, um, still active, still looks great, by the way, um, and and still doing at least a Midwest loop um, with things like mm-hmm. that. So, ninety three point seven, the fan. I think that's still the fan. Yep, that's still a thing. Okay, yeah, you, you're my sports. That beat a, it's not B ninety four anymore. I love we're talking about the Cheswick Arena where Snoop Dogg and TNA were. Mm-hmm. I, remember I attended a TNA show there. It was like my first ever, I think, house show with TNA, watching TNA. And, uh, and and that Cheswick Arena is not there anymore. I drive. Is that the same building that had a uh, that had that one really long uh, promotional consideration paid for by the following? No show. Okay. No, 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 no. That was at that was in that area, and it's yeah. It's, was- it was at the Toy Con that would become Steel City Con. Uh, that was my first. That was my second show filming. It was two days, and they had a mm-hmm. tournament. And Shima Zion, now walking wild, it was around the same time. It was like two thousand eight or nine. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's not there anymore. And I drive by where it used to be every week when I go to uh, Thursday night fights. Oh, yep. You pour one out every pour time. Pour one you out, baby. It. Pour one out. Yeah, and I never got to an FNW show, but recently, <laughs> through some, I, I, I have somehow. I think I have worked for the remnants of FNW because my understanding is the people behind pros of wrestling were part of this. And also the, per- the, the more recent new enclave wrestling is now uses the letters FNW. Uh, I think there's a, a, uh-huh. a classic Pittsburgh wrestling split of some sort uh, <laughs> with the branding and, and owners and such. So, <clears throat> so it's just interesting all these years later, FNW just came back within recent weeks uh, as a company brand something here in Pittsburgh. So I don't know. Uh, I'll learn more as we go here, I guess. Um, so, but uh, that was kind of a chance encounter uh, uh, in both cases, I think. So uh, really interesting there. Again, this is an amazing time capsule. Uh, and again, talking to, uh, uh, you know, a proto Corey Graves, uh, if I'm not mistaken, relatively shortly before he did end up getting signed by WWE uh, and turning into the Corey Graves that we now know on our television every week on SmackDown at currently. Uh, so, you know, it, it was really cool. And it, it, he always had good vibes. He was always really great to us here as a young fledgling podcast here all those years ago. So, um, you know, really cool to kind of go back and listen to this. Uh, Riz, what did you learn, at least from your Butterbean part of this interview? So I learned that, uh, man, Butterbean, like, not even from, like, just from that interview and as well as like the history with what has happened with Butterbean over the last years or so, dude can, dude's a fucking fighter. Mm-hmm. Like legit. Like how, I don't know if you've seen his I've never seen MMA stuff. I kind of want to now. Yeah. I kind of want to see his MMA stuff, but have you, I mean, did you see his like, 
like the 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 DDP yoga one? No. Like how he was he he was like in really bad shape. Mm-hmm. And like now he's actually walking like normal almost normal, I guess is a better point. Yeah, the Butterbeans comeback is probably one of the best promotions for wow. DDP yoga. Like look how look how like look how he looks. That's amazing. And I think he's trying to come back. Yeah. I'm not sure where, but I think he had a match lined up, but maybe mm-hmm. but still like Dude, if you're one of those dudes that, like that has that kind of weight on you and stuff, man, like that that yeah. that, add, that adds up. Like I know that was like the kind of the you know, the presentation and everything at the time he got to use it in, in, in the fights at the time. But yeah, he can't do that for that long, man. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but. Also, uh, Rodzilla beat uh, Mister Not So Perfect for the CCW Championship. What? The Rock. Uh, no, the Rock. Uh, Dennis Rodman beat. Uh, where is it? Mister Not So Perfect? Uh, Todd Bridges to win the CCW Championship. <laughs> of course he did. Of course he did. Um. <laughs> I learned, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, hey, I, I learned, like, you listen back to that, you can see why why uh, Sterling start, Sterling went somewhere. Like, dude had mm-hmm. a, a good gift for Gab. Um, I also learned I've come a long way as an interviewer. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Oh, I was so, well, it, actually, can you see, uh, you, you, you'll see when you, you go back and try to listen to the Sterling one, my confidence level gets a little better because I've talked to Sterling a few times, right? And I was definitely kind of struggling with the with the butter bean one. I'm glad DJ Lunchbox was there to help out with that. Uh, as somebody that kind of followed him that stuff and everything, it so, was really nice to hear him laugh. Oh my god, I mean, I I miss miss it. Like, this little chuckle. This yeah, little... yeah. I mean, man, it was just such a good early vibe, and I I, I miss him being a part of these things. So, you know, he's he's doing well with his lady uh, over in Ohio. So, mm-hmm. you know, it reminds me, I gotta reach out to him. Be like, hey, we're just listening to an old interview in. I'll have to tag him when we post this thing. So, yeah. Riz, thank you so much for hanging out and uh, listening to old interviews with me. Maybe we'll do this because um, we usually take that week off in um, New Year's. Maybe we'll, we'll try to do it now. Yeah. If there's, a, if there's one, an old interview you'd like us to do another kind of anal- analyze on and re listen to uh, for our off times, holidays, and such, please let us know. Hit us up, good times at wrestling and uh, we'll nice. see what we can do with that. So, thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.